the weave is broken. Those of might and magic are falling. Factions fly to fill the vacuum of power as the spell plague brings destruction across the Forgotten Realms. Two heroes meet in the abandoned ruins of the Sword Coast town of Lelon. Women skilled in sword and sorcery, upon whose shoulders rest the fate of the entire Forgotten Realm. Wait, wait, wait. Is he talking about us? I sure hope not, because that sounds like a lot of responsibility. Oh, gods. Hello and welcome to Best Left Forgotten, the deliberately uncanon and unofficial Forgotten Realms D&D actual play podcast. My name is Nathan Quadrio and I am your dungeon master. My name is Miriam Feats and I play Clarabelle Trollbleeder, the dwarven barbarian. My name is Jess Wolfendale and I play Flick Goldkind, the gnome druid. In case you'd forgotten, Flick and Clarabelle were safe and their plummet to certain death by an old ally. Whisked into the mine tunnels under the dread ring by Eric Threshale, the bat they promised to favour to in the Leylon Mines, and Woody the minecart. Eric sent Flick and Clarabelle deeper through the tunnels to find and destroy a beacon, currently connecting the Dread Ring to the Sword Mountains. While searching the tunnels, Clarabelle found dwarven pictographs depicting the Dirge of Delzoon, a great fiery power taken over by the Red Wizards of Thay. The duo found the beacon in a room, with two Red Wizards and a strange portal in its centre. While fighting the Wizards, Clarabelle smashed the beacon, but in doing so, destabilised the surrounding tunnels. Flick and Clarabelle were left with no choice but to escape through the portal, from which emanated the familiar music of the symphony. Let's jump right in. You leap into the inky blackness of this portal and begin to descend down. You don't feel yourself as if you're falling, more as if you're floating. And you can see each other. And you are looking across at each other. Each of you has a background of shining stars and swirling nebulas. As you continue to look, you notice that perhaps these are not stars as they blink out and in. Blink out and in. Almost like the blinking of a hundred eyes all around you. Some close, some far away. All around you, you can hear the singing of the choir being in the space for both of you now. It is a lyrical movement of voices coming into unison and breaking apart into complex four-part, six-part, eight-part harmonies flowing in, and you can feel the music vibrating your very soul. Out of the darkness, you feel a push of air, as if a large creature has moved past you but you can't see anything and then all of a sudden floating in front of you is the locked box which contains the orb except it is no longer locked and it swings open and the orb floats out in front of you blue streaks flowing around it sings this voice what do you do can i i think immediately on instinct clary bell's eyes flick to flick's hand to see if Ooh. anything's going on with that at the moment you don't see anything going on with flick's hand okay flick's just like not again <laughs> um i think i just grip your hand a little tighter cracks begin to appear on the surface of the orb you feel like if you don't take it now you might lose whatever magic it holds. That might be a good thing out of character. Yeah. But um, I think Clarabelle looks at you. I just grip your hand a little tighter as well and I'll reach out okay. and I'll grab it with my spelled hand. I don't know what to call it anymore. <laughs> we know it's not a spell catching hand yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so if like you're going to grab the orb. Yep. Okay. Clarabelle. How are you feeling about the orb? What is your intention with the orb? Are you accepting the orb? Or do you are accept you the orb into yeah, your life? Do you life accept the stuff? orb into your life? <laughs> As your lord and saviour. As your lord and saviour. Just a pamphlet floats out of it. <laughs> um, I think Clary Bell stepped into this portal willing to accept whatever was happening, 
like she took out though she took out her earplugs she was fully like ready to embrace so mm-hmm. i think it's the same with the orb like if this is what's happening she's rolling with it until she can't roll any further okay as you reach out and touch the orb flick the glass breaks and the magic courses through your hand oh no through your body through the other hand that is connected to Claribel <gasps> and shoots through her body too and you both feel yourself consumed with fire from the inside, a burning within you, tingling on your skin as you can feel the blue magic crackling throughout your body. <sighs> and you breathe out and you land onto the stone ground beneath you. It appears to be night and you cannot currently see where you are. You have both leveled up to level five. Ooh. Ooh. Orb level up. Yeah. And you have one point of plague changed. Of oh, excuse, excuse me? me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you re- Unacceptable. Can you repeat that, please? You are both plague changed. So this means... Yes, please tell us what this means. That you have accepted the orb into you, and it is now the magic of the spell plague is moving throughout your body. So you have one power, as well as other narrative consequences that you may or may not, you know, experience. Uh, Yeah, yeah, but we got a power. (laughs) Which is a burst of spell plague. Once per day, you can use an action to create a burst of fire in a five-foot cube around you. 2d8 plus your level of fire damage. And it's a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Oh, this is cool. What would you like to do? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I feel a little strange. Like, yeah. What just happened? I know, but the orb's gone. So good, maybe? Is this like, are are we? Because, I mean, everything that we fought that had the blue flame do Mm. hinky things to them went crazy. Mm -hmm. Is that? We're good. Yeah? Yeah. I think we're okay. Okay. Because everything that had the flame doohickeys also had the orb with them. And we We have- We don't have- We don't have that. The orb. So that's definitely how that works. Yep. We beat the system. Okay. There is no outside influence, just us. All right. Totally how that works. Yep. <laughs> Can you tell? Nine Let's try to convince <laughs> herself. <laughs> We're going to be fine. Okay. I think Clarabelle's going to look around. Does this look like the void that we went to when we first met the symphony? Because that was like the that was like mm. the stone floor and the shadow creatures and the moving stairs and all of those things. Does mm-hmm. this feel like that place? You look around and you find that you are not, as far as you're aware, in a strange place. You think that you are back in the real world, quote unquote. Great. So we just dropped through a portal. Yeah. Where a bunch of things looked at us. And now we're good. (laughs) Okay. And so just kind of in front of you, uh, as far as you can see at the moment, you haven't turned around, is just this blackness. Okay. I guess we'll turn around. (laughs) (laughs) We say to each other, three, two, one. Huh. You turn around and there is this huge wall of kind of partially transparent inky blackness. And you can see on the other side is a flame that stands 12, 15 feet tall, frozen in place within a giant orb, a blue flame in a blue orb. In a locked box. In a locked (laughs) black box. And you keep looking up to the night sky with hundreds of twinkling stars and hovering maybe a kilometre or two up in the sky, is an enormous stone obelisk that would stretch three or four kilometres in height, just hovering in the sky above you. Okay. Um, what? Wh- huh? A stone obelisk. So, so when we were facing the other way, it was just inky black. 
It's just black. It was just, just dark. Just you couldn't dark? really see. If you, 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 uh-huh. you, you light a torch, okay. you might be able to see anything. All right. And then we turn around and there's a giant blue orb with a blue flame behind a strange yeah, force-filled wall. Force-filled wall. And then above us, open four, sky, open sky, and four kilometer high hovering obelisk. Correct. Well, glad we got that cleared up. Yeah. Um. Okay. Sorry. What? I don't. I. I have never seen anything like this before. No. Obviously. Um. Um. Clarabelle's gonna light a torch. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think while you're doing that, Flick's gonna sort of check in with herself here Mm -hmm. and see how she's feeling. Because a lot of stuff has just happened sort of magically Mm -hmm. and wants to see if anything feels different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can feel within you that there is some kind of power in your hands. You're feeling warm. You're feeling prepped. You can feel the adrenaline pumping through your body. Okay. Um. As the torch is lit next to you. And there's a kind of cognitive dissonance that's happening here. As you light the torch, you can see around you is stone cave wall that kind of dissolves into night sky. A little bit like the Hogwarts Great Hall, where it's like wall, Mm -hmm. wall, wall, night sky. Yeah. And then you hear... From which direction? Approaching from behind you where you were originally facing. I turn around. You see a small figure quite a distance away approaching with a um, torch in their hand moving towards you. And their voice echoes throughout this indoor, outdoor, strange cave that you're in. Watch this I smell. Do we, like, call out to them or try to hide? Um, I mean, I've got the torch lit. I don't think we're going to be very well hidden. But if they're talking about something they can smell, maybe they can't see. I think I have guests here. At least they know what they're doing. Like, yeah. I think, hello? Hi. Oh, I do have guests. Hello there. Hi. And as he approaches, you notice that one leg seems to be lame. And he's like, step, pulling the other leg along. It's this man, tall, thin, with kind of this wet, slick hair that's very patchy, that kind of comes over his face. His whole body seems slimy. And he is, in every way, green. His skin, his hair, his eyes, his clothes... And there's a combination of this uh, slick sweatiness. It's almost like he's made of slime. Hmm. It's been a long time since I've had visitors here. Yeah, sorry to drop in like this. We didn't, you know, mean to, but glad to be here. Would you mind telling us where exactly we're visiting? Hmm. We got a little turned around. Well, I don't think visitors are supposed to be here. The priestess wouldn't like that. (coughs) And he starts to cough. And then his body kind of like tightens up and then grows and spreads as he slowly transforms into this ancient green dragon (coughs) in front of you. I'm sorry? Is that a is that a goof or is that <laughs> <laughs> what's happening? Nathan has decided to do in-game goofs Goof now. now. <laughs> We're very proud of you for this new sort of. Uh... That's the only explanation for the fact that we're seeing an ancient green dragon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the green dragon begins to sniff around hello there the voice now larger echoing throughout the chamber you can tell that this dragon doesn't know where you are you can see the inky eyes now that they're so much larger and this aging face of a dragon completely blind it seems and very unaware of its uh, surroundings Uh uh-huh i just chug at you like (coughs) do we want to try to make friends with this dragon or are we just going to try sneak past it Cause it'd be cool to have a dragon friend. Just saying. Yeah. 
and the dragon slams into one of the walls because it can't see where it's going. Oh, not there then, and turns and begins to walk to the opposite end of the room. Uh, Clarabelle is immediately going to, like, start stealthing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Roll stealth. Yeah. Okay. 21. Uh, Dirty 20. Okay. You begin to stealth. What would you like to do now that you are stealthed? Um, do we just want to try move towards the... I want to move towards where it came from mm. and suss out what's down there. Okay. You sneak away and you can hear behind you the voice of this dragon. Come here, friends. Can I, like, vibe check this dragon? Because, like, maybe he just has a mean voice, but he actually, you know, isn't that bad? Maybe? Roll an insight check. Natural 20. Okay. The dragon is incredibly aged. Mm -hmm. Like, you notice that the back leg is completely not working at all. The scales are broken apart all over the place, and there are massive gaps that go straight to flesh. Mm. There are scars all over its body, and what little you've seen of its face in the light of your torch, you can see that there's almost a sadness in the face with these milky white eyes. It can't see anything. It clearly can't hear very much. It's living in an existence that is a little bit pitiful, especially for a probably once mighty dragon. Mm. But, like, does it mean as harm, as far as I can tell? Um, it's difficult to tell. It's definitely prowling, but prowling poorly. Mm. You probably wouldn't want to stay. I kind of feel bad for him, though. Hello there. <laughs> oh. I am continuing down the tunnel, trying to see what's here. As you continue down the tunnel, it begins to rise upwards. A set of long, tall stairs up. Up, come into a wooden door. Um, yeah. Have you come with me? I think I probably stayed back a little bit, but I'm now moving to follow you. So, yeah. like, I'm on my way. Yeah. I'll wait for Flick at the stairs and then we'll head up together once she's with me. Okay. As Flick arrives, you push open the door and you find yourself inside a castle. Okay. As if you've just come up through a dungeon, you're in a corridor. And there are several offshoots. Sorry, did you just put us in a dungeon with a dragon? <laughs> this is <laughs> Did we do the dungeon and the dragons? dragons? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I close the door behind us. Sure, you close the door. You can hear some sound coming from ahead of you. What does it sound like? Um, the sound of people. Voices, movement, conversation. You're too far away to determine exactly what it is, but there there will be people. Um, hey. Hi. Hi. Um, okay, priestess? Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Am I, was there a priestess that we all told yeah. about? Yeah, we were supposed to go see a priestess right after this, right? Oh, but then we were told by a person mm. that we liked and by a person that threw yeah. us off a tower to our death. Which, you know, mix signals, Yeah, but it does mean we'll probably end up going to see her at some point. So maybe it's the same priestess? Maybe. What was her name? Priestess Rohini. Rohini. Yeah. All right. Should we just try to keep sneaking through this and make our way? I think being sneaky until we know where we are and what's yeah. going on is at probably least, better. At least there seems to be some kind of clear path. Yeah. Like, we know which way to go go and i was really worried that we were going to pop out in that weird void dimension mm. with the creepy ant people and the the shadow mm -hmm. symphony folks so this is preferable it's something all right show we um yeah we'll creep forward through the are we in a hallway now yeah yeah great you move towards the source of the voices you walk down the corridor turn a couple of corners and find yourself kind of uh, in the entrance way to this place it's a large foyer and there are double doors down the end that leave into a hall in the hall there's a lot of movement there's maybe 10 20 people in there a number of them seem very ill and they are wrapped in bandages and you can see kind of this 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 
there's something wrong with their eyes. From this distance, you're not entirely sure what, but there's something going on there. They're not entirely focused looking around. They seem a little bit lost there. I take Clary Bell's hand. Is the something wrong with their eyes similar to the something wrong with the eyes that the dragon had? No. Okay. Um, has anyone seen us yet? Not yet. Okay. They all seem kind of focused down yep. um, in the Great Hall. And in theory, we could leave? Is this the entrance for you? Yes, that's yeah. correct. You could leave. Okay. Walk out the front door. Walk with confidence. At least then maybe maybe stick our head out the front door and get like a lay of the land. Like, yeah. Are we even, are we in the right dimension? Are we, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, I think that's what Clarabel would like to do. Just stick a window or the front door or just somewhere where she can look out at the landscape and be mm-hmm. like, is this home? Is this a different dimension? Where are we? Yeah. Okay. You kind of move further into the foyer and you're kind of in almost the foyer of like a corridor and down one end yeah. is the great hall and down the other end is the, the open door to the outside. Yeah. And you look outside and you can see water. Okay. Just water? Uh, well, it's- Sorry, it, it, just checking. Underwater or like look out? <laughs> you're an Atlantis. <laughs> Forget the forgotten realm. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, it seems like, well, there's this this long stone bridge mm-hmm. that comes over a, a long body of water. It doesn't seem like the ocean. It seems like a river. You can see some greenery, but because of the height of where you're at at the moment, you look out and you can just kind of see the coastline on the horizon. Does any of this, because this seems like a decent landmark, like mm-hmm. keep with a long stone bridge over yep. a river, is that ringing any bells? Roll a history check. Yeah. 21. Putting together what you know of the landscape and yeah. what you know so far of Priestess Rohini, you believe that you might be at Helm's Hold. Ooh. So we're not far from Neverwinter. Isn't that nice? Which is like an hour's travel from where you came from and then maybe another, maybe half a day's travel from Neverwinter. That's nice. As you look out. <laughs> Horns blast out from outside, and a herald calls out, The priestess Rohini has returned! The uh, priestess has returned from Neverwinter! Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And you can hear from inside, Yay! The tired cheers of the people in there. Oh. The healer, she is here! Yeah, so these are like other people in the waiting room to see yeah. the healer. Yeah. That's good, right? Do you want to stay and check this out? Um, I don't know. Well, you're the Let's one. Let's check her vibe. Yeah. She looks, sounds like she's about to come past. If it doesn't look good, maybe we find a different healer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sort of take a few steps back, I guess, yeah. away mm-hmm. from yeah. the door. Riding on this brown steed. You're not entirely sure if it is a horse or it's a mule from this distance. It, you're surprised somebody with this much fanfare, they're riding bareback, they're riding on not a particularly mm. beautiful horse, but they're moving at quite a speed across mm. this bridge, quite a narrow bridge, towards what you believe to be Helm's Hold. They pull up and come down, and you see who you assume to be Priestess Rohini with long black hair, Tanned, dark skin, no shoes, wearing a flowing purple dress with a very high slit on its side. And she walks into the hold as if she's floating, just gliding, her feet barely making a sound on the pavement. Her hands reaching out and touching as people rush towards her. Do not fear, my children. I am here. And she places hands on their ailments. Hmm. Does anything happen when she puts her hands on them? Or is it just like a comforting gesture? It appears to be just a comforting gesture at this point. You're not noticing any miraculous healings. So it's not like a touching Jesus cloak and... No. No, No, it's not that, as far as you can can see. I mean, she's pretty. Yeah. She's certainly something. Maybe let's see where this goes. Let's just stay where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's watch. Someone will notice us at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Come to be healed. Do not allow the spell plague to wrought terror upon you and your families. I am here to heal, as I have healed so many before. Walk with me. 
And she walks into the great hall, followed by all of these people. All right, so we may have to move. <laughs> yeah, we can follow at, like, the back. Yeah. I don't know if what I've got is, like, spell plague, though. Is that okay? Flick, it's got blue magics in yeah. it. That's pretty that, standard spell plague stuff that we've that come like across. The only it just has to be blue. Anything blue is spell plague. Blue flame and blue Latin have been pretty consistent. That's orb though. Orb isn't like it's, it's related, but it's not the same thing. I thought maybe okay. It's I don't not know like as much spell about plague in a bottle, but you know, I don't know as much about it as you. I know you did a bunch of research about it at some point. Yeah, it didn't help me though. Okay, it was just like ah yeah it it's. There. Well, maybe Priestess Rohini can tell us whether yeah. what you've got is spell plague or whether it's yeah, some other hinky magic. For sure. Let's follow at the back of the group. Yeah. Hmm. As you move in, already she is starting to inspect people at the front of this great hall. All the tables and chairs have been moved aside and it's just an enormous cavernous space. She touches and looks. Yes, please come to the infirmary. And she points to the side and people are taken by these other men and women who are a little bit more armored into a side space. Mm. It seems my healing cannot do much work for you. I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry. Please return to your families. And she begins to look out over the crowd. You there! And she points at Flick. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Hi. Bring forth your affliction. I sort of like half start to step forward. I'm like, I'm not sure if this is like a spell plague thing. So I don't want to like waste your time if you want to see other people first. All are welcome here. Okay. Bring yourself forward. Okay. I'm following right behind you. Okay, great. Yeah. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, I sort of saw you step up and like sort of hold out my hand like sort of to myself almost. She reaches out and touches your hand. Can you make a wisdom saving throw? Oh, God. I would like to be ready to go. Uh-huh. Just okay. ready to go at a moment's notice. Yeah. 25. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So you fail. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> and she turns into an ancient green <laughs> dragon. <laughs> okay. You are a spellcaster? I am. You feel a little come through your body and pass through. She's tried to cast something on you yeah. and whatever the effect is hasn't held. Yep. And she looks at you and there's just a slight, very slight kind of shift of questioning like, okay. I. <laughs> yeah, I. Hmm. <laughs> this is peculiar. How long have you had these injuries upon you? A uh, couple days. Yeah. I sort of looked yeah. at Clarabel. Um. Just on this hand? Uh, yeah. I hold up the other one to check. It hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. You check and it hasn't. Um. How are you dressed? Uh, I'd say like three quarter sleeve shirt with uh, overalls and some boots. Do you have any leather armor? Yeah, I think we previously established my overalls armor. So yeah, like leather type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She reaches out to your sleeve and rips your sleeve off. Okay. Okay. And you see what was once a hand, now your entire arm is covered in this darkness. Oh. Flick? It's okay. It's okay. It seems to be spreading. And she kind of places her hand upon your heart. Mmm. I can feel the spell plague inside you. Oh. I can feel it. It is twisting you. Right? Where did you come across this? In a forest? A forest? Yeah, we were just sort of moseying along, and then I was like, oh, can't breathe now. And then when I could breathe, it was there. I can breathe. I haven't had trouble with it since, so that's nice. We were investigating a darkness in the forest that was affecting people of druidic practice Mm. more than others. I see. These friends, they are welcome to the fold. And she turns to one of the guards next to her. One of the people next to her. (laughs) Freudian slip. Take these to my private quarters. I will speak to them there. Oh, gosh. Can I have my sleeve back, back, please? And she passes the sleeve to you. Thank you. We will talk in a moment. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Come, all those who are needing healing. And two burly guards, one male, one female half orc, move up towards you and begin to kind of like hip and shoulder you in a particular direction. Yeah, I yeah. don't think we're getting out of this, so I'm I'm doing that. Yeah, and I'm right next to Flick. Good. Like I'm I think I might even grab your hand again. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm sort of holding my sleeve in my hand, like, oh. I'll fix it when we can have you, a chance to sit down. Can you rip the other one off? I feel like it yeah. needs to be even. Yeah, we can make it's it a even. Vibe well, now. I can fix it or I can just rip no, the other one. No, just rip one. the other one and All I right. hold my arm out. <laughs> nice. As you are ushered into a side room of this great <laughs> hall yeah. by these two strong guards, you are going by choice. Um, so that initially there was a little bit of unnecessary mm. pushing, but now yeah. they're kind of allowing you to go. You move down this very thin, small side hallway and you walk past a door that is wooden but has a little barred window. And through there, in the darkness, just for a moment as you walk past, you can see all these people wrapped in bandages, holding themselves, rocking, and surrounding them with these blue flames. And then they're gone and you are led further down. Mm. You are led up a set of stairs that spiral upwards into a tower. Okay. (laughs) I'm really sorry, but I have to walk this one as well at least. (laughs) It's not a long walk. Yeah. Maybe it's only a couple of minutes. Nothing compared to the mm, last yeah. tower. Compared to the I last think tower. Claravel's just not a fan of towers. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's insult her tower when she comes up to greet us. Like, <laughs> hey, this is nothing. No, because then we'd be admitting that we oh, were. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 The door is pushed open. Mm-hmm. The priestess will speak to you soon, says the man. Yep. Do not touch anything. Like anything? And the door closes. Can we touch the floor? The floor is and lava. They walk down. <laughs> okay. I mean, they said we couldn't touch. They didn't say we couldn't look. True. I'd like to look around. As you look around, you're in a beautiful, lush suite. There is a four-poster bed down one end of the room up mm-hmm. on a small platform, surrounded by small tables with candles and little trinkets and flowers. Where you're entering is into kind of like a little lounge space. There's a chaise lounge and a, a cupboard that seems filled with a variety of bottles that seem to be alcoholic. On the top of that, a variety of glass bottles filled with flowers and teas. There's a table in there intricately inlaid with gold. And on there is, again, a beautiful set of candles and flowers that are there. There's a lot of natural feeling in Mm. here. Uh, I'm immediately going to sit down and start uh, ritual casting to tap magic. Okay. Where are you sitting? On the lounge or on the floor? Uh, On the floor, center center of the room. Okay. I would like to, because this has gone so well for us in the past, I would like to look for secret doorways. (laughs) Investigation. Destroy this woman's room. That's an 18. Ooh. That's really good for me. <laughs> okay. Flick is on the ground, closing her eyes, kind of allowing the magic to take effect, reaching out with her hands, moving the pieces that need to be moved. As you investigate the room, you're kind of looking on the ground and on the walls and pressing. As you move, you kind of go around the right wall and end up at the alcohol cabinet with the tea yeah. on top. And as you arrive there... You hear a voice. Looking for some tea? Rohini loves to give tea to her guests. I think that you would love some. And the chaise lounge begins to move towards you. Oh, my God. What beauty in the beast is this? (laughs) No. Something sweet, maybe? Something natural? I'm not sure what you're looking for. Um, yeah. I just... A good old-fashioned English breakfast, if you've got it. <laughs> good old-fashioned English <laughs> breakfast. Oh, fabulous. Yes, take it down in one shot. I get it. And the chaise lounge stands up and the legs begin to, like, pouring pieces of, like uh, into into a kettle. D- oh, does God. it have a face? There appears to be some kind of, yeah, like on one end of the, the lounge there seems to be a face. Kind of. Flick's trying so hard to keep her eyes closed and concentrate on this spell. Do you, I mean, I could, I could help with that. I've oh, got no, thumbs. please, and- please. That's what I'm here for. Rohini would be thrilled to have guests and make sure they're catered for. I guess I just let this chaise lounge <laughs> make me a cup of tea. As the lounge continues to make your cup of tea and passes it to you. Gently, dear, it's hot, it's hot. 
I'll just go sit with my friend. <gasps> Not a problem. Would they like anything? Hello. To- oh, oh, she seems busy. She seems uh, busy. She's just taking a minute. It's been a long day. She's just having a little rest. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, w- you know what? When she's finished her little meditation, I'm sure she'd love a cup of tea. Not a problem. And her two kind of chair legs clap twice and two little ottomans <laughs> rush over for you to sit on. All right. Cute. <laughs> It is lovely to have guests. I'm sorry. I'm normally uh, just here to, you know, introduce and then the priestess walks in and then I'm, you know, I'm done. Well, um, what's your name? My name? Yeah. Oh, well, it's Shay. It's lovely to meet you, Shay. I'm Clarabelle. Clarabelle, hello. Um, and this is Flick when um, the meditation's finished. I'm lovely. sure Flick will introduce herself as well. Lovely. Does the priestess have many visitors? Um, yes, a variety of people, not normally such lovely young people such as yourself. Who's the most interesting visitor you've ever had? <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's mainly this one man. Um, oh, these two men. Uh, well, Lord Protector Neverember, he's down here quite often. <gasps> you know, he has a bit of a, you know, a je ne sais quoi around him, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, but he's a little bit too brusque for me. I'm, you know, more into, uh, the low-key uh, types. And then there's this other man, ooh, I ch- the mayor of Neverwinter. Ooh, I've never cared to learn his name. He's always, you know, sniveling and sneaking in corners. I mean, I've never met them, but I'd take your word for it. You seem like a very good judge of character. Mm. You know, um, there's that thought about, like, the, 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 the neck controls the head, that kind of idea. Yeah. You know, I think that the Lord Protector is both the head and the neck. Oh. So... Lord Never Ember yes. is really pulling all this, like a puppet situation, maybe? Like he's pulling the strings and the mayor oh, just sort no. of stands around? Oh, well, I don't know. I think that he's more of a figurehead. I'm not sure what the mayor does, aside oh. from whinge and whine. I'm, I'm not really a fan of him very much. <laughs> the Lord Protector is far from a puppet master. No, no, no. Especially with Priestess Rohini. She would never be puppeted. Oh, no, no, no. She's mm. really more of a leader. You know, I think that he comes to her for wisdom and for guidance. Can you give us examples of her amazing wisdom? Oh, well, you know, I wouldn't dare speak for her when she's not here. She wouldn't like that. Fair enough. Well, it seems like you lead a very interesting time here with all those amazing fancy visitors, even if they are unpleasant. Well, yes, you know, but I'm, I'm not much of a mover and shaker in this business, more of a listener and a caretaker. You know, I know my place. <laughs> well, you make a darn good cup of tea. And I'd take a sip. (laughs) You know we don't have to play out these ten minutes in real time. (laughs) (laughs) And the rest of the time passes with a variety of small talk. Some cookies are brought forth as you continue casting and finish casting this spell flick. There are a few pieces of magic in the room. Uh, There are a number on the, the alcohol cabinet and amongst the teas of kind of small items of magical trinketry and things like that. You also notice that some of the furniture is magical as well. Obviously, Shay, um, the two ottomans that have been brought out for you, there's a couple of chairs as well and a wardrobe where part of it seems to be enchanted. Mm. Yeah, I guess two sort of specific questions. Certainly. Uh, One is the tea itself magical? Mm -hmm. No. So, I mean, well, you you had your eyes closed, but it seems to be not one that was used because the other one is ready for you to have your tea. Yeah. So, no, one that is away. Awesome. Uh, And the other one is just, like, if there's any sort of magical uh, traps or, like, sigils around the room. No. Great. That's a good start. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Wow. That was some good meditation. Flick, this is Shay. Shay, this is Flick. Hello, Flick. Hi. Tea? You look like a tea kind of gal. I certainly am. Beautiful. What, what, you know, something light, something dark, something fruity? Uh, just light, please. Light? Oh, lovely. Beautiful, beautiful. And she kind of rushes up and sets you a, a beautiful, delicate yep. tea. In place I sort of moment. like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and grab that with my right hand mm-hmm. and sort of uh, lean on my left hand so it's hidden behind me and I don't have to look at it. Because I'm getting kind of kind of a bit freaked out yep. by that whole situation. It's good tea. Yeah. Delightful. Well, I'm sure the pieces will be here any minute. Please make yourself comfortable. Mm-hmm. Shall I sing? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Sorry. <laughs> the Lord Protector loves my musical stylings, but that's okay. I understand that, uh, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, sorry, just a bit nervous at the moment, okay. I guess. I know, it would be a real shift from your meditation mm. and the door swings open oh my God. and in walks Priestess Rohini okay. by herself and the door closes behind her. Uh, are you both sitting on one of the little ottomans? I am. Uh, I think I'm probably still on the floor. Not a problem. You can feel the ottoman underneath you, Clarabelle. It kind of like stands to attention and um, Shay sits back down. Shay resets herself into her lounge format. I assume that Shay has cared for you well. Yes, yeah, she made us some tea and got us some biscuits and shortbread. It's all very delicious. You should be very proud of her. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I am. And she clicks her fingers and everything seems to go still. Tell me what you have seen in the woods. You are investigating darkness? Mm-hmm. Have you come across the red wizards? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think the that fact that we stop <laughs> and look at each other and don't say anything yeah. probably gives it yeah. away. But we go, ah. Have you come across the Red mm. Wizards? I have long been investigating their incursion into the forest. They are bringing darkness there. Yeah, we we saw strange dark figures following us. Mm. There was a door <laughs> In the woods. Indeed. Yeah. In in like a ruin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we saw some hallucinations mm-hmm. of things. We from- don't know what was real. Yeah. And some creatures. You had a strange bunny rabbit. Dread Bilby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You speak of a door. Yep. Yeah. Are you aware of uh, what is inside the door? Nope. Can you roll a deception <laughs> check? <laughs> Wow. She rolled trash. Okay, good. 13. I see. Well, the door itself leads to what they themselves, the wizards, call the Dread Ring. Within it is the heart of their operation in the woods. If you know of them, it needs to be destroyed. I think that's a bit above our skill level. Yeah. But we'll keep it in mind. Have you been there? Unfortunately, I am otherwise occupied at this time, but I am aware that it is something that is being worked on. Perhaps I could send you to investigate further. I look at Clarivelle with panicked eyes like, what do we do? So when you say, okay, um, <clears throat> so we have met a red wizard called Hamoon, but he was just tinkering with a tower and had some zombies with rhyming names. Mm-hmm. He did ask us to get a weird sword. Mm. So that is something that has occurred with the Red Wizards that we were involved in. And that's how we know who they are. Flick is definitely starting to go red now. Like, she feels <laughs> so bad about lying. She's really struggling to keep it in. I personally, going somewhere called a Dread Ring... Doesn't fill me with confidence. Can you tell me how you know about them and what exactly destroying them would achieve for the place that we're at and the people we know? Are you wearing your Emerald Enclave pins? Yeah, I am. Flick put hers in her pocket. No, I'm wearing one. Are you wearing a Laws Alliance pin? Yeah, I'm wearing both of them. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I I can't lie. I am. I'm fully wearing both of them. They're both on my lapel. I'm very proud of them. That's fair. I don't think Flick is wearing either at this stage. Well, I see here that you, um, Claribel, she doesn't know your name. Nope. No. That you there, and she indicates towards Claribel. Claribel. Hello. You are wearing insignia of both the Emerald Enclave and the Lord's Alliance. Oh, um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm a novice on both of those. Like, I'm the lowest level of rank. I don't get told a lot. I would say that the darkness spreading throughout the the Neverwinter Woods would be of interest to both of those parties. I work very closely with Lord Neverember of Neverwinter, who is also the open lord of Waterdeep, the heads of the Lord's Alliance. I'm not sure if you know. And um, they are very interested in weakening the power there. They seem to be looking to awaken some dark secrets and spreading it through. Such a risk so close to Neverwinter, and here to Helm's Hold would be catastrophic and could destroy the entire forest. I think that uh, the Emerald Enclave would be quite upset about the destruction of the natural habitat. I'm not sure about you, pointing to Flick. Uh, You seem to be um, natural in your magic casting. 
yes. Perhaps, uh, you know, the loss of such a forest would be very saddening to someone of your kind. I would not be here to assume. I mean, have you been to the Dread Ring? Do you know any of the Red Wizards yourself? I do not know any Red Wizards. Insight. Does Please? she? She got name dropped by Natural 20. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Um, mine's uh, 12. 28. Oh. 28? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's oh. my highest plus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nathan. Did Jess get something? Did I just ruin your campaign, Nathan? You didn't ruin anything. <laughs> um, you realize that she is lying yep. and she does know the Red Wizards. Yeah. Or of some Red Wizards. Or she is more connected to Red Wizards than oh, yeah. she's letting on. Yeah. It's very subtle. Like she's a good liar. Oh, like silky smooth. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I just sort of so like. Clarabelle, you get nothing. Yeah, I know. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good news is Flick feels less bad about lying now. So where she was about to spill her guts to this lady, she's now like, oh, no, I actually did the good right thing here, maybe. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we were just here for the arm thing. And uh, we we don't have to be here for that. We if you seem real busy. So we can just go and maybe come back another time uh, after we've dealt with this red wizard thing. That seems like it's pretty high on your list. So maybe we can go do that. I'm good. I feel great, which is technically true. Yeah. <sighs> mm -hmm. And I stand up. Okay. Very well. My understanding is that there is some kind of tower within the dread ring. If that were to be destroyed, then perhaps you would be able to end whatever was spread there? That seems like a big operation, but, uh... Perhaps your friends at the Emerald Enclave would be interested in assisting you? Yeah. Yeah. We'll check in. And how would you have us get into the Dread Ring? Mm. And she smiles. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't know such a thing. I've only heard rumors... But perhaps you might be able to find a way to enter. I, yeah. I don't know. You know, you seem to be very knowledgeable young people. Yeah, we'll check in on some leads. And would you want us to come back and let you know how things went? Or is that just going to be like a you'll sense it through the magical mm. forces of the universe kind of deal? Return. And she comes really close to Flick. And places her hand upon your now exposed mm -hmm. rock arm. Return to me. I will heal this affliction. There is something strange going within you. And she steps back and clicks her fingers. And the Ottomans move off. And you are, you fall upon the yep. ground, Clarabelle. Yeah. Uh, Would you like some tea for the road, Shay? Oh, that would be lovely. Please let me just... I I've got a flask. You can put it in. Not a problem. And she sets you another thing and fills the flask. I would like to, before we leave, if there's a way to, like, shake Shay's hand, mm -hmm. I think Clarabelle would and just... You're a very good whatever it is that you are, <clears throat> and I'm very happy to have met you. Thank you. I'm very happy to have met you, too. And I'll just take my tea. Ta-ta, friends. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure we will be seeing you soon. As Flick heads towards the door, she's just going to sort of pause in the doorway. And she wants to try to feel something out because she's she wanted to leave. And now she's sort of like yeah. a bit hesitant about it. I think the only thing she can think to do is... We saw blue flame on the way in here. And I think now that we have that within us, she wants to just sort of reach out her awareness, I guess, and see if she can sense any sister magic to what is now coursing within her. Roll an insight check with advantage. Oh. 
It's a one and a two. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so funny to me. Just natural 18. Natural 20. 20. <laughs> natural 70. A two and a two one. one. Thank you. <laughs> Flick all kind. <laughs> Which becomes? I mean, that's a 10, right? Yeah, it's a 10. Okay. You feel out for sister magic and you feel nothing for a moment. And you turn and you look at Priestess Rohini and her eyes lock with yours. And there's a flash and you see two enormous eyes and several further eyes circling (sighs) around it. And an enormous toothy jaw, layers and layers of teeth. (sighs) And then you're back. Yeah, I grab Clarabelle's wrist and I'm like booking it. Like, there's not even any subtlety here. I'm just getting out. Yeah. We're going. Yeah, we're, we're out. booking it. Yeah. Nathan? Okay. That's okay. Is that like Beholder? Is that I what we're thinking? No idea. Oh, I'm not thinking anything. <laughs> I'm thinking, ah, oh, man, I want to figure this out. But also, like, ah, I hope she didn't feel me feel that. I think she did. Yeah, probably. I think she, she locked eyes with you because she, she felt it. She didn't stop us. So that's nice. That's true. I don't think we're a threat right now, though. No. I think we're more useful to her than we are a threat because we're going to go do the thing with the dread ring that she wants us to do. Uh, are we? I think we kind of probably need to. Oh, I don't know about that. We leave. <laughs> we head south. I'm going to Waterdeep. <laughs> I'm going to Baldur's Cave. <laughs> Bye. I'm going home. <laughs> Far away from this nonsense. All right. Yeah, I think I get you outside. Yeah. And then I'm just like hands on knees, yep. hyperventilating. Yep. Like, mm. Flick, are you okay? What happened? I mean, one second. It was, I mean, she was kind of intense and then you were running and I don't really know what what mm. happened. Mm. Uh, is it? Oh, do you think it's safe to talk here? I don't know if it's safe to talk anywhere. Oh, do you want to get across the bridge first, maybe? That'll make me feel better. I yeah. don't think it's going to do anything, but I think it'll make me feel a bit better. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And I guess we start walking across the bridge towards the mainland. Yeah. Beautiful. You move across the bridge um, and kind of looking out, you see a couple of things. The first mm-hmm. thing is as you look towards your left, you're seeing that this river that you're crossing is connected to the rivers that you have crossed mm. earlier before. Right, yeah. And you look to your right and you can see Neverwinter just over the ridge there. Yeah. As you cross Claribel, you yes. notice in front of you, as Flick is kind of essentially sprinting across, I imagine, yeah. the arm that is now exposed. Yeah. Around that, her overalls, uh, Flick's overalls and the kind of Ooh. shirt, tunic yeah. underneath is soaking wet just on that side. Flick? What? Something's, and I want to run up and I want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to okay. touch it. Uh, you do touch it and yeah. it is in, it's, it's very wet. Flick, something's, what's. What? Your, your clothes are damp around where your arm is, is funky. Are you sweating a lot or is that. Yeah, I sort of feel around that area and back of my hand on the forehead, like wh- it, what's happening? Um, you're not sweating a lot. But you can smell, and now, Claribel, you're closer. It smells salty, like it's seawater. Huh? I don't... I... Okay, add it to the list. Add it to the list. Other side of the bridge. Let's talk about it. Okay. And you arrive at the other side of the bridge. Okay. Oh, I think it, Flick just starts pacing. <laughs> yep. uh, okay, cool. So, um, wow, where are we at? Okay, so we were in... A bad place. Yeah. And then we went through a portal. Yeah. And then we were falling and we've got orb in us now. Yeah, orb magic <laughs> running. Yeah. Great. And then we were with a dragon and then somehow that led us to the priestess Rohini. Yeah. And she's something else. Yeah. So she was lying. Oh, she was lying. Fully lying. I was asking is, lots of those leading questions, but absolutely. I just couldn't get a read. No, it was very helpful. It allowed me to get a read. I was feeling real bad about lying, but then no, I felt not so bad. I thought um, that was the right call from the cool. beginning. And then as we were leaving, I looked into her eyes and oh, there was like a bunch of eyes in there and like a toothy mouth. What? And oh, 
I think I saw like, she's about something else. And that was that something else. Like that is a scary woman. And I kind of wanted her to tell me about my arm, but like, I think we probably did the right thing by getting out of there. Cause that's a lot. So there was like a second version. It was almost version like her, her soul. With lots of eyes. Lots of eyes. Okay. And lots of teeth. And lots of teeth. Okay. Um. All right. All well, right. that explains the running away in fear. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. It doesn't explain why you're oozing salt yes. water. Second item on the list. Um. Arm worse. Yeah. Both in terms of area of coverage is it like going all the way up to the shoulder now or as you kind of check in it's going across your chest as well and kind of the front and back of your shoulder yep cool okay Mm. and then salt do you have any connection to salt water the ocean the ocean yeah in the way that everyone else has a connection to the ocean. Can you roll a history check, please, <laughs> Flick? Okay, that's a lot better than my last history check. It's a 17. Okay, so you remember that you were sent off from your homeland yeah. to try and save it from the rising waters of the Spell Plague. Right, yeah. And you were told by your parents that there is a connection between the health and safety of your island and your own health and safety. So, yeah, Flick fully just stops in the middle of what she's saying, like... Flick? Oh. Is salt water the the answer? She just nods. Okay. Is that something you can talk about right now, or do we need to wait until later? I don't... I think I need to tell you now. Um, okay. Whew. You know, do you, have I told you why I came here? We really haven't talked no. um, wow. about our past very much. <laughs> cool. So I came from some islands. Okay. Far away. Yeah. And I came here a- on a mission because my islands um, are being affected by, by by the spell plague. And so I sort of entered a kind of pact that I would come here and I would figure out how to stop what was happening. Like okay. the f- forests were, weren't were doing good and the oceans were rising. Salt, water. Um, and uh, sort of part of the deal was that when I am hurt, the island is hurt, but more importantly, when the island is hurting, I'm hurting. So is your arm representing that something bad is happening at home for you? Is... Is does this mean your island is is not okay? I that seems yeah. I think that's what it is. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but um yeah, probably should have figured that out sooner. So, hang on. The spell plague is that a ticking time bomb on your life right now? Uh, is that what you're telling me? I think so. I think um my home is in some big trouble. And if I don't figure out a way to save it soon, both me and everyone there are gone. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not allowed to happen. Nope. We're going to fix that. Um, I know we don't trust her, but we're going to do what she said. We're going to destroy the tower and we're going to, we're going to get you healed until we can figure out how to solve the problem at its at its base which is the hmm. stuff with your island. Okay. Even putting aside the whole we don't know how to destroy a tower that stretches like kilometers into the sky. I don't know if that's the right call cuz like yeah, great, maybe stops one person from dying, but like maybe bad over why does she want that because she's potentially she's obviously got a lot of fingers and a lot of pies she's connected to the wizards because that that lady that threw us out the tower definitely knew who she was but also we trust Callie and the emerald enclave and if if the dread wizards are in the forest then then the stuff is hurting them from from what they're doing yeah. as well so like it, it Like, I think it's a short-term, definite good. Like, yeah, we're destroying the wizards 
and that's stopping the bad thing happening right now. But I think it's the longer term. Why does this, I'm going to go ahead and say, clearly bad priestess person want that to happen? I don't know. And I don't, I, I'm and not. And wants it badly enough to like, you know, in a roundabout way, now that I'm thinking about it, kind of threaten me. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to heal your arm until you do this thing. I know that it's not good. And I know that there's other things happening and I'm not smart enough to, to weed it all out and figure out what the threads are. But I know that if we do this thing right now, you get healed and that's my priority. Okay. Um, let's chase down the thread a bit. Okay. That's the next step. Let's figure out how we would do it. And then maybe at the same time, we can try to figure out if there's another option. Okay. At the same time. Okay. So we're not wasting time, but we're also e exploring options. Oh, I wish Soda was here. Yeah. Okay. She always had a way of just making things make sense. Mm -hmm. So, Emerald Enclave, are we going back? They don't like us. <laughs> then, then where do we go? I mean, we could go the Lord's Alliance route. They've got people on it, right? Would that be Neverwinter then? There'd be people. That's where Sodar was heading before we sort of picked her up. And got her involved in all this rest of the stuff. Let's try never. It's right there. Let's try never winter, right? Bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was morbid. Okay. Yeah. We're. Let's go. We'll figure it out on the way. All right. Do you have a jacket or something? I don't like looking at this anymore. I like the sleeveless thing, but maybe yeah. later. Um. And I, I pull out one of the shawls that I would have lent you back when it was really cold. Yeah. I think that's Clarabelle's version of a jacket. It's just the crochet. Little pink yes. crochet shawl. Great. Yeah. I sort of put that almost like as a side cloak to cover my arm. I'm like, never winter. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. And I guess we strike out. Yeah, we go. And as you travel through to never winter, that's what we're going to call the session. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Best Left Forgotten. You can find and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Best Left Podcast and on our Best Left Forgotten Facebook page where we post updates, info, and additional content. Music by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. Full song list and additional artists can be found in the episode description. Cover art by Caddy Wampus, who can be found on Fiverr. Thanks to Jess Wolfendale, our editor, Miriam Feats, our social media manager, and Nathan Quadro, our GM and producer. If you enjoyed our podcast today, please leave a review and tell your friends.